Greetings and welcome back once again to From the Depths, where in this episode I hope to build our laser system, which will include an offensive and defensive system, and then to war. We must attack this resource zone over yonder and possibly face a great peril in the form of 75 enemy strength. Just uh, what I don't even. But uh, that will have to come after we've built our laser system. Now, previously I've built a laser system, but uh, I did it quickly. I didn't have time to properly explore it or go over how to build a laser system, and that's not really what I enjoy doing. Now, before we begin with the laser system, I actually need to uh, make a little room for it. And you'll see why I'm moving these things around in just a second. Let's get those down there. Are they up on this side? Oh, no, that's not right. No, 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 no. I need them to look the same on both sides, or else I will get very, very upset. Is it all? Uh, okay, that's good. And if you're wondering what I was talking about, it's that one side has a little weird black thing in the middle, and kind of like the top, really. A little, little like, button it almost looks like. And then the other sides look like rusted metal. I, I, it just needs to look the same. I, I don't care how weird that sounds. It, it just makes sense to me. Now then. The thing with lasers... You could say a lot about lasers, but I... I think the best way to describe them is to think of a laser system as a two-part system. There's the, the part which makes the laser beam, and then there's the part that uses the laser beam. Now, the multipurpose laser is kind of the, the central block. It deals with the laser. Think of it like the heart of a system. Um, so you've got different parts that are creating energy, different parts that are going to do something with the, that energy, and in the middle of it, kind of making sure that everything is, is, is working, is the heart pumping. But uh, we're not going to worry about the multipurpose laser block just yet. What we're going to start with is a laser connector. Now, the connector connects to couplers and components that use the laser. The couplers are, are, are kind of what feed the completed laser to everything else. Only the multipurpose laser block itself and other connectors will connect to the connector. <laughs> Awesome sentence there. But uh, we're going to start with this, and we're going to place one of these on either side. This, we're going to attach a laser coupler to. Now, the laser coupler, it's the, it's the first part of the, of the sort of laser system that makes the laser. Uh, I'll just call it a laser cavity for, for now, because that's the main component that goes into it. But uh, understand that there's many more things to, to the, this system than the laser cavity. Think of this like an engine, if you like. The laser coupler is the engine block of the engine, and the laser cavity is the crankshaft of the engine. It, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's, uh, this is the crankshaft and cylinder mixed into one. You need a laser uh, cavity, at least one of them, in your laser system for there to be a laser beam. Without it, there, there simply isn't a laser beam. You can have all of the modifying components you want on there, it won't do anything. It's like an engine that is just all carburetors and superchargers. Without a, ca uh, a cylinder, it does no work. Now, the laser cavity is where the laser beam is generated. Place multiple cavities in a line to increase the strength of the laser. Laser cavities need to have pumps directly connected onto them to produce the laser. Now we want a laser pump. Now they have to be facing into the laser for it to work. Now, ideally, you want it to have a pump on all four sides. We don't have room for that. Three will work. It's just not going to be as efficient. Basically, the more pumps you have, the faster it can recharge the laser after firing. And that comes into play when you're doing anything with a pulse laser. Um, it's not as... Well, I guess it's even more important, actually, with a continuous beam laser. But I'll get into those things in a moment. Now, it mentioned there that it has to be in a line. You can't just build more cavities off the side. It's like a crankshaft. It has to be a straight line. But unlike the engine, I can have multiple um, laser cavities coming off of each uh, laser coupler. In fact, as you see there, there are six no beams. That corresponds to each of the sides. Now, obviously, you would never actually want the laser cavity on all six sides because then it can't send the laser anywhere to be dealt with. So at most, you'd only ever have five, but uh, you could have six if you just wanted to be weird. Uh, next. Now, because if I place one here, 
I'm not going to be able to have a pump on that side. I'm going to use something else. I'm going to use a frequency doubler. Now, the frequency doubler, uh, it's a crystal that can be placed anywhere in the line of, la of a laser cavity. It increases the frequency of the laser and, as such, increases the armor penetration value. Now, you'll notice that I'm making two of these at the moment. I'm using a mirror line to make them. They are both going to feed into exactly the same weapon. It's like having um, two lines of connectors on a custom cannon that have ammo reloaders just fe feeding into one firing piece, much as we have up above on the, on the deck gun. But uh, understand that these are cumulative. So although I've only got one frequency doubl doubler in each one of the two uh, laser cavities, Overall, their effect is just uh, summed together. So, for effe effectively, these will add two armor piercing to the end system. The end system itself starts with one armor piercing. So, you only actually need a uh, another nine. But because of symmetry, we're going to be adding another ten. Now, everywhere that I can fit three pumps, I'm going to put a laser. Uh, cavity there, so we've got we're up to eight on armor piercing. This will bring us up to ten. At this point, there's absolutely no reason to add more of this. If I was making more um, actual laser cavities itself, uh, like a, a, a third one here, then I would have even less in each line. But it, an interesting thing to note about these is I could just as easily have them built off of the coupler itself because they can form their own laser cavity. You don't need an actual laser cavity in the line for these to work. Now, that is an important thing to note. I believe it is a bug. So I don't tend to use it myself because, in, in my mind, logically, these things are basically fo uh, are focusing crystals and the laser has to travel through them to get an effect. So if they aren't actually in a coupler that has a laser beam moving through it, uh, a cavity that has a laser beam moving through it, then they shouldn't do anything. Now. Because we, we don't ha have any use in adding frequency doublers, we can add laser destabilizers for the remaining areas where a laser cavity wouldn't work. And a laser destabilizer placed in a cavity, the destabilizer will dramatically increase the energy used to fire it, but also increase its damage potential and also the range as well. So uh, adding these just makes the laser beam much more powerful and uh, can travel further. Now. The thing to note about this and why I made a point of discussing the fact that laser frequency doublers can basically be on their own, these can't. If you don't have a laser cavity in the line with these, they do absolutely nothing. But if you have at least one, then they seriously increase the power that they can produce. But uh, we're going to make... Honestly, a ridiculously powerful laser system here. I'm sure other people are like, that isn't ridiculously powerful. Why, just the other day I made something 25,000 times more powerful. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, well, that's completely useless. Why would you do that? <laughs> that's like saying, I'm going to win this game of chess by nuking the entire country that the game is being played in. Ho, ho, ho. It's, it's just like ridiculous. Yes, you can make absolutely stupendously powerful weapons in this game. And well done. You've just made a super OP fortress. You may as well stop playing the game now because you've won. I intentionally try to avoid making stupid, stupid overpowered systems. I know sometimes I do. That missile system in the last uh, campaign was an example of me going overboard. But I'm going to try to avoid that. For example... One of the things that uh, some people have uh, been suggesting is, oh, you should, you should add torpedoes, and then you should add this, and then you should add that to this one ship. And it's like, well, if I did that, I'd have no need of a fleet. I'd just send this one ship everywhere, and it would do everything by itself. I don't want that. I want to actually have a fleet. Now, I have filled all of this up now with uh, laser pumps, so this would be able to put out quite a lot of power. We won't know yet how much until we actually connect all of this up to a multi-purpose laser block. But there's one more thing I want to discuss, and that is the Q switch. The Q switch is placeable on the laser coupler and converts the laser beams from all connected cavities from continuous wave to pulsed firing. Now, this is very, very um, important. One Q switch fire rate is once per second. Two is twice per second. Three is four times per second. Four is eight times per second. 
We are going to go with three. So uh, we'll have four pulses from this laser beam per second. Now, this is the interesting thing. These are per coupler. So, for example, if I didn't have the, la the mirror beam here and I took one of these away, this one would be firing a laser beam one, uh, twice every second, and this one would be firing its laser beam four times every second. So you'd have a, an interesting sort of thing going on with your, your laser, because the laser itself would be firing a, two independent beams in, in a way. Uh, it, I will demonstrate it if I get time. But that's all we really need to do here. What we want to make sure is that these are completely connected to each other. So I can feed everything from these into one large laser. Now, what we have to do is we have to line it up. We want this laser beam to, well, ideally come up through here. So let's go ahead and delete these blocks as we can. Is that... Oh, yeah, we could actually do that. Okay. Let's uh, do this, then. We'll bring down the connectors all the way down here. Now, I'm not going to run... Ah, oh, you know what? Mirror beam! Half the time I forget to put you there, and the other bit of the time you just betray me. <sighs> Why? Why, mirror beam? We could be such good friends, you and I. All right, let's uh, get this fixed. Silly avac. Right, okay. Now, I'm not going to run this all the way down here, because for one thing, it would be ugly, but for the other, it could break. If, if something hit it, I mean, in this case, if anything managed to break those barrels, they, they'd take out much more anyway, so it really is a moot point, this one. But I actually really like using these. These are laser transceivers, and they have quite a range. I'm not sure how long the range is, but basically, you see those little blue beams? Once we've hooked this up to an actual destination, this will just fire a laser beam between these. It'll, it's a way of transferring the beam in a sort of uh, non-interactable state. So something shooting through here won't break something that would break the beam. Obviously it would because this would explode, that would explode, this would explode, and then all of this would go with it. But uh, assume for a moment that something just broke through here and didn't have an explosive component then if we were building a chain of these connectors, then it would break that chain and the laser would stop working. But as it is, it wouldn't have any effect. Right, now let's uh, come up here. What we want there is another one of those to send the beam upwards. Uh, right, now, this, this is the tricky part. Uh, I'm trying to decide what we want to do as far as... Our weapon goes here. Now, I've kind of kept this area free because I want to build up or have the option to build up more laser cavities later on if I need them. Or just have this area for uh, some other specialist works regarding the laser. But for the time being, it's basically going to be hollow. As I mentioned, I had some uh, shenanigans with getting the weight of the four, of the uh, ship right. So uh, we're going to be air on the side of caution with this and just build this area out of wood for now. Uh, there we go. And actually, why... Uh, yeah, why am I doing it like that? That's very inefficient of me. Let's go this way instead and uh, build it across that way. There we are. That's much better. Right. Now, the thing with the uh, laser transceiver, and this is really important, and this is why I like using them, is if we go in here, it'll actually list it as well. If you believe the transceiver's built on and directly above a turret, and built be directly below the turret on the vehicle, so not part of the turret, can tr communicate with each other. So basically, you can feed the laser up through a turret. It, the comparison would be if you had a cannon that uh, all of its ammo reloaders were just in the belly of the ship somewhere, but somehow it was still feeding all of that ammo to a turreted cannon system. It makes laser turrets very, very, very... I'm going to say that again. Very versatile. Whereas uh, regular touch just aren't. Now, I'm thinking that if... I'm trying to decide whether I want to make this a uh, tall turret. I kind of do. I'm 
damn myself, but I really kind of do. Uh, that would allow me to make it a 360 turret. So I'm going to put another laser transceiver there. Can I... no? Yes, let me get rid of this. Oh, I've locked the uh, orientation, that's why. But, as I was saying, I... We're going to make this a regular 360 turret, I think. We're going to bring this up fairly high. I'm not going to quite bring it up that high, but... Uh, we'll bring it up a little bit more than this. Maybe if I use the uh, downward slope. No, that's the wrong way. There we go. And there and here as well. There we are. Right. I will upgrade this to be metal at some point. Right now, I'm not going to do that, but uh, that is that that would be the 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 idea there. Right, let's go to new object, 360 turret. Please don't ruin my base, but with this, please please don't punish me for making this decision. Uh, we want realistically we want it to come out forward, but also back just a little bit. So we'll do this. There we go. Now, I really haven't played around with missile defense systems much, so I'm going to have to hope that uh, it doesn't go awry, because it very easily could. Now, what I'm going to want here is an AI weapons controller, perhaps? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that was silly of me. Put the weapons controller there first, then build the wood out around it. I should have done that. That was a derp on my part. Uh, yes, let's get the wood beam. Put down the mirror line. There we go. Then we will add a fail safe. Because we don't want this firing on us. Because it's going to do a lot of damage. We would also like this on channel 3, I think. And then put a wood block right at the back. There we go. Now, the reason why I'm not making it out of metal, as I've mentioned, it'll just tip the ship over. And I don't want to have to deal with trying to balance that right now. Am I going backwards? Yes, I was going backwards. That was a bit weird. Uh, okay, I must have hit G or something. Uh, actually, yes, I probably hit G while building. I'll just change my control scheme to land so I can't actually control anything for now. Okay, right. What we're going to want to do is... I would say build the multi-purpose laser block here, then connect it with a laser connector up like that. So this should all be okay, and then finally the laser transceiver. Can I uh, unlock this? Now if all goes well, yes we can hear the uh, engine working there. Our pulse laser will do 1576 damage. With an armor piercing of 11 at a range of 29,000 meters. <sighs> I said I wasn't going to go overboard. Look what I've made! Look how easy it is to do that! It is crazy. Right, I'm going to put a laser missile defense on the top there. I'm also going to place one at the back and the sides as well. Like so. Uh, actually, how about I don't do that. I just connect it up along the top. We go along the side like that. And uh, bring this out. Laser defense there. Now I'm hoping that the uh, AI will be clever enough to understand that, oh, well, I've got all of these options for my laser defense. I'll just use the one that is in the best position. There we go. I'm not really sure how this is going to work. Like I said, I haven't played around with laser missile defense at all. So, uh, this could just be completely useless, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot and, and hope for the best, really. Um, actually, we'll get rid of that. I'll uh, try and leave that out there. And grab this. There we go. Now, this little uh, turret is actually remarkably uh, slimline. I'm pretty impressed, actually. Quite impressed. We want to cover the top as well, so let's get some uh, slopes there. And some slopes there as well. 
This is <laughs> the littlest turret ever. It's almost cute. If I didn't know how much damage it could do. Uh, let's grab uh, an upslope and bring this back there. Okay, got something going now. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to extend this out one just so it looks a little bit uh, better. And we are going to want to go back to wood blocks, get a downslope there and there. All right, there we go. This is such a humble looking turret, considering the devastation that it can can inflict on the world. Now, I'm going to want the main component of this turret to come out about here, I would say. Now, this is how you weaponize the turret. Because right now, it really can't do much of anything. You need a laser combiner. And the combiner can either connect to the multipurpose laser or right in front of it or the connectors themselves. Much like I've got the, the laser defense doing right now. But we'll just connect ours there. Now, that allows it to fire once you put some optics on it. Laser optics are placed directly in front of the laser combiner and focus the beams, thus increasing the range and accuracy of the beam. With low accuracy, the, the laser will wander. Um, You'll probably see that anyway. As this is on a 360 turret, I'm not going to need as many of these. These are steering optics. Basically, they allow the beam to be focused away from directly in front of you. Gives it gives it a, a, a degree of freedom. Um, up to six of them can be placed. And each one placed makes it wider like that. But we're not going to go too crazy with that. We are going to get quite a lot of uh, focusing crystals on it, though. I can't help but feel like I'm playing Eve whenever I'm talking about lasers and focusing crystals. It's my Amar roots showing there, I feel. Uh, let's go for upward slopes. There we go. And we'll bring this out... Yeah, we'll get another one there. Bring this out one. And we'll go for a downward slope. And one down. Okay, I'm uh, I'm liking this, actually. I'm liking this a lot.